welcome to Tuesday, September 27th, 2016 meeting of Grand Blank Township. And now I'd like to start the uh, order uh, of the agenda with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Bennett, will you leave? Sure. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'd like to ask for approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Mark. And all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The agenda moves forward. Public comment? Anyone for public comment? <laughs> I guess I just can't be quiet. <laughs> that be seven to one word. <laughs> See, one of these nights, we need to put your name on the agenda. Just, just <laughs> <for the job. laughs> uh, change my if I change my name to public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, maybe I'll hear about it tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything in regards to this township. Uh, meeting with the city, okay? I just hope we're not kicking the can because it's election year and we probably are, but it's sure nice to get that done with. Enough on that one. I see we have surplus vehicles uh, on the agenda again. I see there's a 2005 uh, Tahoe on the agenda for tonight and there was a 2005 Tahoe on the agenda and approved on August 11th. I think this is a different one that you're not reapproving something. And I also wanted to say on the on your website, that's a little loud, eh? on your website uh, or our website, it has a link to look for surplus equipment, and it goes to government.com. The comment is in here that you could want to sell it with Enterprise, which is great, but the most money you can. But it'd be, I hope we take and put that link on our website so our residents can see what the township is selling for surplus equipment. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's okay. that be nice to Very know. good. <laughs> Anyone else for public comment? Anyone else for public comment? Moving on. The board shall consider a motion to <coughs> approve the request by DPW Director Sears to declare several uh, pool vehicles to surplus property and authorize the disposal of the vehicles through either public auction to the highest bidder or through the enterprise fleet management auction process. Mr. Limita, would you please explain the sure, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. The three vehicles that you have on there are a 2007 Chevy Impala and a uh, 2005 Chevy Tahoe are both from the police department pool. The 2003 uh, expedition is from the DPW or general administrative pool. Uh, all these three vehicles have in our uh, head mechanic Steve Chilcutt's uh, opinion mm -hmm. have reached their useful life and it's time to move them out. We did approve a couple earlier for uh, disposal. This three will bring five that we're disposing of. We did get the three in for the uh, police department. Uh, the other two are not being replaced at this time. There is plans to replace one vehicle. It is in our capital um, projects, uh, planned expenditures for next year for assessing to replace one of their vehicles. Um, this, the expedition is what Treasurer Guzak has been driving up till now. He's going to go back to the Malibu that's been part of the assessing pool. They don't use all their cars during the winter months, so we're not going to place that order for the new assessing vehicle until uh, probably sometime after the first of the year and have it here for spring. The rest of them, the Enterprise Fleet Management came about when we did the lease with Enterprise. They told us that uh, nine times out of ten, they get more for vehicles than we do on gov deals. And uh, so we talked about it with um, the head mechanic and he thought why not give them the opportunity to prove it. And so what, how that works is he gives us a, a price of what he thinks he would have got for the vehicles and then we turn them over to Enterprise. Enterprise goes out and sells them at the highest <coughs> bidder and uh, 
we have that threshold that if they do not hit the price that we thought that we would get for them, we have the option of either taking it back from them and selling it on our own or approving it based on what the highest auction was. And you know, we really will defer to Steve in this one and allow him to set those value for those vehicles. Okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> uh, is there any questions or comments? <clears throat> Uh, no comments on this case. Go ahead. So moved. Support. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. The board shall consider a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to establish municipal civil infractions. I'll make the motion. Thank I'll support. You. Okay. Who did support, Larry? Yes, Larry. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we uh, roll call, please? Roll call. Okay, Mr. Bennett? Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Guzik? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Kemp? Yes. Okay, approved unanimously. And now we go on to the next. The board shall consider a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to establish penalties for violations of the Municipal Civil Infraction Ordinance. So moved. Support. Okay. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Guzik? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Reardon? Yes. And Mr. Kemp? Yes. The second reading is approved. Uh, <clears throat> The board shall consider a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to amend existing ordinances to change the penalties for violations from criminal to municipal civil infractions. So moved. Forward. Two to that view. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Bennett? Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Guzik? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Reardon? Yes. And Mr. Kemp? Yes. Motion approved. All three ordinances are now in effect. Thank you. Okay. The board shall consider a review of the proposed 2017 annual general fund budget. Madam Chair, I did ask uh, the department heads to be here. Um, for this evening, just in case there were any general questions, you guys were delivered on September 1st. You've had uh, the last 26 days, I guess, for review. Uh, the department heads are here in case there are any specific questions about the department. This is the first review publicly that we looked at it. We've had the opportunity to read the narrative, not only my general narrative, but the narratives of the department heads that explain some of the changes or challenges that they face in their budget for fiscal year 2017. Uh, there probably will be some changes um, that will be required to be made to the budget as it sits now. From a financial standpoint, as we work through our negotiations, uh, one of the things that uh, we would be asking for you guys to consider uh, to adjourn into an executive session this evening to talk about where we are in our negotiation process for our union contracts with the police department. Um, depending on those negotiations, there may be some required changes to the budget, so I just wanted to reserve that, knowing that the next time you see it, predicated upon the negotiations, there could be some changes. Uh, there's also in here in the uh, Treasurer's Department, I did make that recommendation about uh, taking one of the cashiers, making them a half-time float position, half-time to a DPW. There's been a lot of conversation between myself, Treasurer Guzak, uh, and, and others about the uh, feasibility of being to take them down to two cashiers. I know there's some concerns about customer service so I want to make you guys aware of that. That's an ongoing situation that we continue to discuss to see if we can't fully fund that cashier's position. So three remain up there. Um, part of the reason that I moved the cashier is for a couple reasons. Number one, it prevents us from having to hire a part-timer in the DPW. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity to float that person, which we have a need for somebody in almost every department um, throughout the year at various times. And trying to achieve that without hiring the three fill in those, those uh, part-time positions. We've had two part-time positions this year, trying to eliminate those and be able to use that position. It also, as you're aware, I got a planner in this year's budget, which was really a goal of the board is to get that planner back in there. We think that it will pay off dividends and economic development for us. And then just the continuity of being having the developers know that we have the same person here Monday through 
Friday who understands our processes, our vision, uh, and how to navigate through um, all of our ordinances and, and uh, that. So I'm still trying to maintain that position in there as we go through the changes. Maybe it won't be feasible this year. I really hope that it is because I think it's kind of critical to our operations. But those are some of the challenges that we face based upon our revenue stream that there are critical needs in, in our staffing. Uh, we're trying to address those with this, but it's still a kind of, it's fluid right now. So I just want to make you guys aware of that as well. And then I have all the department heads here, Kathy's here, any specific questions about the budget and how we put it together uh, that I, either I or Kathy can answer, and then specific to building, assessing, uh, fire police, uh, or GIS, um, they can answer your questions as well. Yeah, I do have a question on, on the police one, uh, and I don't have my notes, I had them last time, but uh, off the top of my head, uh, I, I know we have money in the uh, forfeiture fund. And I, I'm wondering, I know we can use that for quite a few uh, things. And, and instead of taking money from the general fund, I'm not suggesting depleting the forfeiture fund, by the way. I'm just suggesting that there are some things uh, on that, that were requested or that maybe we could use for uh, you know, animal maintenance for the canines that we use it out of that, those funds instead of the general funds uh, because uh, you know those funds are meant for things like that. Anything that is anywhere related to the drug forfeitures. And that way it would give us more money. <coughs> Free us money in the general right. fund. So I'm throwing that out really, so for Ron to answer, because I, I think. <coughs> so Dr. Reed, you are Correct, for several years we utilized drug forfeiture fund to um, make payments for the necessities for the canine program. Towards the beginning of this year, um, actually may have been early last year, um, Chief Stan was here. He had that extra line added for a canine line, which was partially funded to pay for those um, baths, food, uh, vet bills, that kind of stuff. The problem, as I see with the drug forfeiture fund, is it's just that a forfeiture fund, and it depletes. And it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't go back up. Um, it is totally on the forfeitures. We have some issues with um, funding mechanisms for FAN coming up as well. Uh, typically, they reimbursed our officers and supplied vehicles for us, and that is being changed. Next, this coming year, fiscal year 2017. They are providing $45,000, but it's no longer a 50-50 because of burn grant going down. And I'm anticipating in the future having to pay more and more of the fame officer and that um, type of uh, needs from somewhere. D does the township uh, still get money from FANG if for big forfeitures? Or forfeitures. Okay. So uh, I guess my thinking on that would be that we continue to fund some of the stuff that we can and in the event, for instance, that, that those funds, let's say, run dry, maybe there's no forfeitures, then we can always take it from the general fund if we have to at that point. But I think this year, this year, I think we could probably still operate from that. Is that if you're asking, is there enough funds in drug forfeiture right now to cover fiscal year 17 for the dogs? There right. is. Okay. Um, but going forward, I don't know if that is a sustainable effort. So my, the, my idea was to get thing, get our ducks in a row now, get ourselves set up for the future, so we're not scrambling to do it, so I don't have to come back and ask for general fund money to um, pay for this, and we can set it up in advance and, and have it prepared. Yeah, I guess, so uh, may, maybe this is a question for Kathy, then, on, right on the same. So could we take money from the drug forfeiture and assign it to that line item for drug or for dog maintenance and you know it is and would that show up so Chief Wiles would know when he looked at his uh, funds that he would have X amount of dollars there. Do you mean transfer it to the general fund? No, no, not transfer trans so so he would know how much money he had to use and throughout the year, because it's gonna go down each you know successive month, uh, how much money he has remaining in that in case uh, you know, something happens that that drug forfeiture money goes away. 
we could certainly provide them with a monthly report to show them what the remaining balance was. Or we could set a, we could budget a dollar amount, and yes, and it does show on that line item what remains within that budgeted amount. See, I think that would, might be more helpful because that way you can keep track going down and, uh, and, and you'll have your light item, light item established, but it would be just funded through the drug forfeiture. And so if, if it turns out that, that there's no money in it for fiscal year 18, then that can be added in because you have the light item. Is that I understand what you're saying. And there's no doubt we could track it because we have in the past through drug forfeiture how much we've spent um, on the P9 program and on the dogs. Um, again, my thinking on setting it up this way, not having a separate line in the budget funded, um, is for going forward, trying to plan in the difficulties of uh, the paying officer and other things that that drug forfeiture money may be used for in the future. Right. Okay. I get that. I do. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Hunter, though. When we're looking at a $7.2 million police budget, it, it, in the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The drug forfeiture is just part of that budget. So. So there's no carryover of funds that remain in that drug forfeiture money, the way I understand it. It just it's part of it. It's like a revenue to the police department. Right. It's a, it, we're treating as a revenue and expenses that goes out. At the end of the day, it's all still coming to the general fund and assigned to the police department. That, that's what I mean. It's, it's baked into the seven point two million dollars. So therefore, it doesn't create like an extra line item to spend. I, I, I guess I guess what I was suggesting instead of funding it through the gen, general fund. And taking general fund dollars, we could utilize this money that really has to stay in the police department. Yeah, it does. Yep. And we could just slowly draw off that. And I think we do that now because at the end of the year, that that money just all zeroes out. I mean, it's just like it's just like any other fund balance, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess we should maybe to your point be looking at there is no balance left in that. You know, that it that it should be used for police. Yeah. In a way, I mean, it, what Dr. Reardon is saying is like, so there's not an urge to spend. We've got drug forfeiture dollars, yes. and if they aren't specifically earmarked for something, right. that you look at it in October and say, hey, I think we should get some, you know, whatever, uh, that we wouldn't have that temptation to do that, I guess, because you're like, well, we better use those up or they're just going to go back into the overall general fund right. Right. Um, and disappear and not be used for police. I mean, we're, but I think that we've had, I don't think that there's been an issue with us spending money on from the drug forfeiture fund i think you've spent it down every year for appropriate i i don't i don't believe so and i don't think it gets zeroed out at the end of well the drug forfeiture does not forfeiture does not the drug forfeiture does not it, it, it carries over year to year to year for certain i don't know how it could do that because we don't you carry the fund balance it's not part of the general fund there's a separate fund set up for forfeitures but, but it, stay, it, don't, it doesn't stay in the police department budget, it goes in the township budget, correct? No, so there's zero. a separate right. fund, a, a drug forfeiture fund set up. And it right. just stays there? Yes, yeah, so and it stays in there. It has nothing to do with the general fund. Right. It's strictly police fund, right? And if it's not tax money, you can't go back into the general fund. There's certain rules and situations that you have to set up. It has to be used for drug enforcement activities, but that's right. very broad. Right, right. Okay, Scott has a yeah. Just. Um, it is, so it is a restricted fund, is right. correct. Yeah. And there's specific items that can be spent on. So correct. we can have it as part of the general fund, but restricted to mm -hmm. those items that, that we can spend yeah. money on. Okay. okay. Any other questions or ideas that might be? Well, I guess in my thought, I don't know. New leadership may have new ideas, but I, I kind of thought in the past we never actually zeroed out that fund. We kind of anticipated expenses and stuff that we might not know about in October that are going to come up next year that that money could very well be applied to. So yeah. things happen, equipment needs to be purchased, body cameras, things of that sort. We have a incident requires us to spend a lot of money to hire a vet bill normal on a dog or something like that, stuff like that comes out of that versus the general fund, the general police budget. So or even to purchase another or even dog. to purchase another dog or something. Exactly. So I don't know that I want to see it zeroed out every year as part of the budget. I would kind of agree that yeah, I don't. I don't know. If, I don't think we can zero it out. Right. 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 You, can, you can't. You can't zero it out. No. It has, to carry, it, has, it has to It has. It has to carry over year to year, and uh, the federal government is very clear on this. That uh, the other part is is that you just can't build this fund without spending it either. Correct. Uh, because they will come in, and the federal government can't take the money that's in it. So if we're utilizing it 
as we go, and I think the, the dog is, to me, a no-brainer to, to do. But again, have it part of a general line item and transfer it back. Any unused money goes back to the drug forfeiture from that line item. That's what I'm suggesting. Go ahead. Okay. Any other uh, subjects or departments that you wish to question? One, one, Kathy, where do we carry that? Uh, there's a special revenue fund. Okay, so it's not in the police budget. Right, it's not in the general so that's what That was my point, because yes. I've never seen it in there. That's why. So it's it's setting in a township special revenue fund. Yes. Right. And actually, but yes. Restricted for police. I got it. Yeah, yeah. it's restricted. restricted. We got it's several restricted, restricted funds, mm -hmm. right. but it's not in the police budget. Again, any other departments you wish to question? I appreciated the narratives that we had. Yes. That was a welcome addition. Comment, Mr. Yes. To Mr. Lehmann, to the group, to the department heads. I, you, you guys did an excellent job. I think you've done a fine job with a balanced budget, put that together. Again, as your, your, your points, and, and Kathy has made that comment from time to time, you know, we're working on about 80 percent of the revenue that there was that was in this township mm -hmm. in, the, in the township revenue side uh, uh, eight years ago mm -hmm. okay so about 80 percent of that existing today so i think over the years the township has done the board and as well as the uh, managers in the, in the department has done a great job um i like the fifty thousand dollar additional contribution to the opeb and your and your uh, caveat that you know the investment fund has is actually adding even more to that. That's a good thing. Um, I want to caution the board that uh, we, it is a balanced budget. Fifty thousand for OPEB is is, is is a tight fit, right? I'd like to see even more if we could do it. So, uh, as well as retirement unfunded liability. So, so I think what we want to do is we move forward. If revenue sharing changes and there's a, more that we want to be careful not to start thinking we have to spend that money. I would rather say all surplus funds up to the $2.2 million uh, uh, fund balance that we have today are put into divided between OPEB and, and retirement unfunded liability. We hear from our, uh, we hear from our uh, auditor every year, you know, I mean, we're making progress. We're, we're not the worst cat in the bunch, right, uh, for as far as uh, how, uh, what our percentage of funding is. And we are new to the game, too, where they are our, our uh, defined benefit is relatively new as, as municipalities go. And so we're catching up, we're on track, we're paying the bills, we're doing the right things. But I just think that, you know, let's not spend it because it's there, let's, let's cover those liabilities. I agree, I agree. But you've done a fine job, a great job, and it's a, it's a, it's a great looking piece of work. I wish we could spend it that way, but Mark, we, we have never been in that situation. Well, we put 250000 earlier in the year, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and Mr. Lehman is proposing in the, in, the, in the department has another 50000 Hey, that's what we're talking about. We're mm -hmm. not saying we got to lessen our, uh, you know, uh, our contribution to that because that's where municipalities, mm -hmm. yeah. you find any municipality that's in trouble right now, and you can go back and point right to uh, of course, our OPEP carried in budgets is rel and Kathy can tell us is, is relatively new. It's I don't know how many years. It's in a decade or, or less. And uh, um, but but retirement liabilities have always been there. Uh -huh. And so you know, and you look, you can look around. There's a lot of municipalities right now that don't think they're in trouble, and they're in trouble. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. I would like to say I, I wholeheartedly agree with with our mm -hmm. trustee clerk. Yeah. Because uh, we can't kick the rope, the can no, down the road. You know, anything that we can pay towards that. But Dennis has done an extremely good yes. job of working with that right and carrying that through to each of the departments that we've got to do this. So we can't we can't have some of the wish list that you know we we kept it to the bare bones. So. Right. So, so, Madam Chair, if I could, um, for moving forward, I did ask the department heads to be here tonight because they wanted to make sure that they were available to answer any specific questions. Moving forward, like I said, with an election year, and rather than hold the budget off till December approval like we normally would, uh, it has to be done by December 15th, but I hate to put it on the backs of new board members coming in, and here's, you get two days to study the budget and approve it. 
um, I would I would propose that we'll work through it again, and you'll see a revised version on the Committee of the Whole in October. The following meeting, if you know if we're, everybody's feeling good about it, then I would move that towards the last meeting, the fourth Tuesday in uh, October, that uh, we would be able to hold the public hearing and move forward with the budget approval so that it's done uh, ahead of time before the new officials would come in and sit down. And exactly. if that's agreeable to the board, then that's kind of the track record that I will try to keep us on. October 25th. Sounds like a good plan. That sounds like a good idea. And then I'll give the department heads a reprieve from coming back unless I hear specifically from the board <laughs> yeah. that uh, their, their presence is requested to answer any questions. Very that sounds good, good too. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Did a good job. Thank you. And you don't have to stay around anymore. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. <coughs> Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> the board shall consider a resolution for the 2016 Support Emergency Operations Plan. So moved. Is there a second? Four. That was Larry and Jude. Yeah. Correct. Larry and Jude. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Does it have to be a roll call because it's resolution? Okay, it's a resolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Kent. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Myself. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Okay. One more resolution. Uh, the board will consider a resolution to support the road closure for the Genesis Budash 5K race on Saturday, October 22nd, to the, uh, 2016. So moved. Support. Any questions or comments? Yeah. What road is it? There? I mean, I'm in favor. What road is it? I don't see Pollock. it. Pollock. Pollock. Okay. It's just a short section. Yeah. Not the whole thing. Right. Okay. That would be roll call too then. No, no problem. Um, and the chief was just. You were okay with it, right? Yeah. This is an annual race by Genesis. They changed the name this year to the Blue Dash. But yeah. Right. Uh, so every, every year thing. Uh, yeah. So same. Fun. Same track or course that they use every okay. year. Mm -hmm. um, we've assisted them for several years now with this, then it's just, we're good with it. Okay. Thank you. Good. Mr. Kent? Yes. Ms. Dr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Guzik? Yes. Mrs. Hoffman? Yes. Myself? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. And now we're down to management reports. Uh, Mr. Lehman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you guys can imagine, uh, wrapped up the budget uh, was kind of a relief, and now we move into negotiations because it's never a dull moment. Um, negotiations are going well. We've had a couple of our meetings. Uh, I will ask that the board consider an executive session this evening because I think that we're at a point where we could use some further direction. And we move forward with the board's consensus on where to get started. I think that we're in a position that uh, negotiations have gone very well. I'm happy to, to report um, that it's been a pleasure working, especially my first time through with uh, the police unions, and uh, it's, it's gone well. Uh, I think as we've sat here and talked about our concerns about OPAB and MERS, I can assure you that our employees share those same concerns that the board shares, and I think that we're willing to, to work together to find an equitable solution that will make sure that we can provide for folks in their retirement um, in a fair and equitable manner. Uh, but it will require uh, some uh, some further direction from the board this evening. I'll make a motion to go to executive session. Okay. One sec. Um, I just want to report before we go in there. We've had some movement in Lansing. Are you all, you're all done. Yep. Uh, we had some movement from Lansing on the medical marijuana issue, mm -hmm. and they have specifically uh, come up with a proposal. And, and by the way, these bills have been they've been approved by the uh, House and the Senate. They've been signed by the governor. And they're waiting basically an assignment as a, as a compiled law. What we need to do though is start thinking about what we want to do with medical marijuana dispensaries. This, these aren't really going to affect the use of medical marijuana for people that are, are registered and have cards and, and uh, comply with the requirements of the state. But it's going to give us the option to decide if we want to have dispensaries in the township. And if we do, we need to create uh, ordinances, either zoning ordinances and or police power ordinances that regulate prim primarily the location, 
uh, hours of operation, uh, zoning associated matters as to as to uh, as to that would apply specifically to uh, medical marijuana dispensaries. Currently, we have a long-standing moratorium because we haven't had any sort of input from Lansing in a while. And before we established the moratorium, we created uh, the ability to have a dispensary located only in the healthcare district in the township. And so, if we remove our moratorium, we have that old language that contemplated dispensaries in the healthcare district. And so, if we want to, uh, if we don't want to have dispensaries in the township, we're going to have to remove that language. If we do want to have them in the township and want to amend our current requirements, um, then we'll need to do that. And I think we should probably uh, get some thought from the township board within the next 30 days or so um, as to whether or not, as to when we'd lift the moratorium. And if we do lift the moratorium, are we going to proceed to have um, new language for dispensaries in the township, or are we going to um, not have them as a permitted use in the township? So the question, the state is giving each municipality? That's correct. Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you have the, yeah, you have the ability to say um, if you want them or not. If you do want them, you have to, and you create uh, ordinances that regulate them, you have to send those to the state of Michigan. They have to, they can't really interfere with the state of Michigan's regulatory process for licensing and growing and taxing. Um, there also, there's an opportunity for municipalities to recover some part of that, that tax money that they'll be paying, although I don't know what percentage that would be. And also, whatever your administrative costs are, I think it's got a cap of about $5,000 or so. To my knowledge, and the chief may know better than I, there are not in, there are no operating dispensaries in Grand Lake Township, and um, so give it some thought over the next <coughs> month or so, and uh, figure out what direction you want to go. Yeah. Mr. Lane, you are correct. There are no operating. I was afraid you were going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> no operating legal. Good. You know, the, when, when the state took action, they gave. Um, Broad authority. They, they really opened. They tried to clarify the Medical Marijuana Act, which, for law enforcement and several other people, there was a lot of questions. And the, the passing of these bills tried to clarify some of those questions, give direction to municipalities. So, mm -hmm. and we'll get a synopsis of the law so you can you can see the whole you know all the steps that that uh, everybody's going to go through, uh, whether we have them or not. So you can get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. Sure. Yes, Scott. Um, is there a time frame that this has to be done by, or what are we operating under here? No, I think that we, well, and I don't, one of the things I don't know is the effective date of the legislation they passed. I think it's going to take effect maybe at the beginning of the year, but it'll probably be retroactive. So what I'd like to do is sometime, if we can, I'd like to get your input beginning next month. Maybe we'll decide something on a moratorium in our November meeting. It's not something that has to be done before the end of the year, though, because we have the opportunity to study it and, and debate it. So it's really on the timeline that you want it to be on, as long as it's reasonable. And I don't think, I think if we take 90 days or 120 days to consider it, that's reasonable. I think if we go much beyond that, we may run into some trouble. Yeah. Is there, uh, I mean, thinking about it, if, if we're waiting until the end of October, Maybe this should be something that the new board would take up, or well, I guess if you're, if, if, well, here's the other thing: if, you, if the way that you will allow dispensaries in the township is to enact legislation or enact ordinances that that allow it. If you don't do anything, um, <coughs> then you could always change your mind at some point in time down the road. As an example, let's say that you 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 are you don't want to establish new regulations for a dispensary, so you you might choose before your terms are up, uh, if that applies to you, um, to say I want to remove the moratorium and I want to I want to um, repeal our current regulations allowing a dispensary, with the understanding that a new board, uh, if they want to go down that road and, and allow dispensaries can create their own legislation that would do that. In other words, you're not making a decision that's going to bind anybody for years. You can always decide to jump in the fray if you want to jump in the fray. But one of the things I think we should do, if you're so inclined, is to, is to make an affirmative statement. And we need to do that already, because we do have this, the old regulations in the zoning ordinance. So 
Uh, what I think we need to do at a minimum is remove the moratorium and decide whatever way you're going to go. Um, and if you decide not to have more, not to have dispensaries, you should make you should pass a resolution saying at this time we're not going to create legislation that recognizes dispensaries in Grand Lake Township, knowing that another board could make the opposite decision. And this could. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is just for dispensaries. Correct. People already can have the medical marijuana grown for the patient. Well, I, I, I need to study the regulations that apply yeah. to caregivers and growers. There's, there's, all, there's a bunch of new categories that, yeah. that speak to that. But to your point, um, we are not, we have no input on the use of medical marijuana no. in Grand Lake Township. This is just dispensary. Yeah, so it's okay. legal now to use marijuana. Correct. They just have to buy it somewhere else. Like, like they're not buying it here, but they could be buying, I think Burton has a dispensary. Well, it's just legal with a medical marijuana card. It's Correct. Legal for everyone to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's legal, so it's just a matter: of, are we going to sell it, or do they have to get it somewhere else? But they can legally do it in, in the township. I mean, smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a caregiver can grow six plants per mm -hmm. patient, up to a maximum of six. But my question, uh, Mr. Laddie, maybe to Chief Wiles, could somebody come up with a list of pros and cons as to the benefits? Of having dispensaries, sure. and mm -hmm. you know the flip side, the negative aspect. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, and I know yeah. that there are. I get calls about every week or so from advocates of medical marijuana dispensaries, and if you want, I, I don't wouldn't suggest this right off the bat, but I'm happy to convey any information they have regarding their thoughts on the pluses and minuses. And also, I want to uh, I'd love to hear um, chiefs' comments. And I know there are chiefs in other communities all over the state, but even in Genesee County, that are considering the pros and cons. So I think I think maybe that's a good idea to have to have a sort of a comprehensive mm -hmm. list. Now, that's also going to take a while for everyone to digest the nuances of that of that act, because some of the pros will be our ability to recover some tax money from the state, our ability to process applications and regulate them and the fee structure. So it might take a little longer if we did something comprehensive. Yeah, but I think that would that would uh, make a lot more sense rather than just jumping in and saying yay or nay. This way we would have a basis for, so I mean, it might push it to the next board, it might not. Yeah. I'm happy to uh, begin to develop that. Sure. Scott? Yeah, and I would, I would like to see a synopsis of the legislation so that we're, you know, especially the different terms, you know, that right. we have, that we have people that are Growers, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. card holders, what have you, and you know how those statuses are going to be affected. So yeah. we know that we aren't opening six boxes instead of one. You know. okay. I'm looking through some correspondence that was sent up to the chiefs on it, kind of a synopsis of some of the changes. And, and time-wise, it looks like it goes into effect 90 days um, after enacted into law. So 90 days after um, Governor's signature it, it is. Um, into law. Also, it's not only for you know dry plants that you would smoke. This includes oils, edibles. They expanded on that a little bit more that you can you know um, possess, sell, and and uh, distribute those. Can I can you, just to follow up? I, I would like your opinion on that too, along the way. Can you um, can we limit the number? Mm -hmm. Or like once we said, yeah, we'll do it. We yep. can just have like two in the township. You can. One or yep. Seventeen. I'll point out one that I think of that in Bird Kitty Corner to, to my office there's an account firm the owner did a lot of business with our company. And medical marijuana dispensary opened up in that strip mall. He when his lease was up, he packed his stuff and moved out. His reason being I don't want to be associated with that, I don't want that as my neighbor, that's bad image, so in his opinion, whatever. And there's actually vacancies all over that strip mall now since the medical marijuana dispensary moved in. Interesting. Some other businesses don't want to be associated with that or that. But now it's going to be the law, so that might make a difference. Well, I was just saying it's maybe the medical marijuana in the medical zones or medical right. districts in the township might be the right answer versus putting it into strip malls. a strip mall where all of a sudden the stores on each side move out. Right. <clears throat> well, that was the original intent of putting it in the, in the medical section because it was for medical use, so why not have it? Well, and Larry brings up a good point. There's there's businesses that are legal 
But there's businesses that are leaving because the dispensaries are moving in. But right. there's businesses that are legal that we don't necessarily advocate moving to Grambling Township right. too. But right. I'm not saying this is one of them, but mm -hmm. we need to take a look at it and see right. all sides of it you know, right. and get opinions. Yeah, I think getting all the facts would be a great idea and we can analyze them fully. So that's a good idea. I'm curious how our police department reacts to people with medical medical marijuana cards. Like if they're driving down the road and somebody's smoking or, because I hear a lot of stories about, oh, they could smell marijuana coming from the car. Do they, do people get a break if they've got the card? They, they get a break, so to speak, if they're not violating the law with the card. It's um, legal to drink beer because, but now while driving down the road. Right, just because you have a card doesn't give you carte blanche to smoke marijuana wherever you want to smoke marijuana. Right, but are you allowed as a passenger to smoke in the car? No. Yeah, because the driver would get yeah, you. Yeah. 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 transport that medical marijuana. Are you allowed to have it in your pocket as you're driving down no. the road? So it's got to be in the trunk? It has to be secured in a box. In the trunk? In the trunk of a vehicle. Oh, okay. That would be the same with the oils and stuff right. that you're giving your kids well, that's, good that's having 100 yeah. seizures a day. Okay. Okay. Well, something to think about. At least in the near future. And, I, and again, I think I appreciate the 90-day timeline. That's sort of what, what I was thinking. But if we go, if you need to go a little beyond that, we can do that too. This is a, it's an interesting topic because now you have you, you're going from what was considered an unlawful use according to the court of appeals to now being a lawful use. And so now you have to you got to make try to clear your head and understand this is a lawful use uh, and a lawful business and. Uh, do you want to, how do you want to deal with it? It's, it's interesting. Okay. Time to change it. It's it's interesting. Interesting. I agree. Oh, yeah. Scott, well, I, would, I would like, I would also be curious as to uh, other municipalities uh, in, in terms of the Michigan Township Association. And I imagine they're going to have some model type uh, ordinances. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm sure we'll get a view of some of those as well. Yeah, there, well, there will be those that, that want to rush to the front uh, of the line and then there will be uh, everybody else that will be carried <laughs> with the current. So I mean, there will be a lot of analysis and discussion to uh, yeah. consider over the next three months and probably longer. Well, and it's important that we do it in a very thoughtful yeah. way because uh, we're setting a precedent here that's going to be tough to change once, you know, we make a decision. Well, that, that's a great point. Uh, once you wade in, you're gonna you 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 would have a lot of you'd have some complicated legal issues if you outlawed a lawful use mm -hmm. versus um, if you say well yeah we'll people travel from well, dispensaries yeah. that and, and there would be investments in in equipment and, mm -hmm. and equity and you know like that you would have a difficult time removing it once you get it right yes sir. Any way to measure toxicity? <laughs> you know, if you say you have somebody that's using it, okay, uh, when you pick them up, and I mean, like you can have a breathalyzer for alcohol, but I don't think there's any way to measure that. You, you can measure the, the nanograms oh. in, of THC in the blood. However, oh. the law doesn't say if you're over this amount of nanograms, it's illegal. But, uh, so any any amount in your system while you're driving a vehicle yeah. is illegal. Okay. So, okay. Any amount? They can give you any amount. They can give you a numerical amount, but in the law, it is not required to um, determine being under the. But how can you tell that? Like, how do you tell that if you pull me over? How can you tell that I've got something in there? So that's an area we've really been what we've gotten much much better on the last few years. Okay. For instance, we had two DREs. In our department now, Officer Wes Evans and Sergeant Bill Rennie, mm -hmm. the DRE is a drug recognition expert. And they had to go through a 12-step process um, to determine what type of drug, because we've seen such a rise in, in drug driving, yeah. um, determine what type of drug um, you are on. Mm -hmm. And Officer Evans is on the steering committee for the state of Michigan yeah. for the DRE program. Yeah. He is the go-to person in the state of Michigan for the drug recognition mm -hmm. expert program. He oh. is phenomenal. Oh. Um, people have questions, they go out and call him. When prosecutors have questions, not just in this county, but any county, they call him. So we are way ahead of the curve that we have two dairies. But what we have done that no other department in the state of Michigan has done, every officer at our department is A-RIDE certified. Advanced roadside 
um, dexterity evaluations, mm -hmm. which gives officers basic understanding and tests to do to determine if someone's under the influence of drugs. Totally different than alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, everyone used to, you know, walk the line and put your finger on your nose and all that stuff. That's not what this the A Ride program is. But we are the only um, department in the state of Michigan that has every officer trained in A Ride, um, and that's a direct result of the efforts of um, Wes Evans, Sergeant Rennie, and their instructors in A Ride. So it's uh, something we can easily give to our officers. Seems to me like if you had a medical marijuana card. So you are so interested in having marijuana either for legitimate reasons or for play. Um, you would always have marijuana in your system because that isn't something that just leaves your system in an hour or two. I mean, it can be in there for days, right? Mm -hmm. Weeks. So anybody that has a medical marijuana card would probably be fair game to be arrested. <clears throat> Correct? No. The, the use of the medical, the use, the ha possession of the, you're having the medical marijuana tech card allows you to legally possess that, possess that in your body, possess it in your, mm -hmm. you know, transport it properly. Um, what you can't do is smoke it in the car, you can't transport it improperly. Um, because you have been given doctor's um, orders, if you will, to have the, the medical marijuana card. But you card, can drive with that, I can smoke it from right now. Unless you are visibly impaired. Okay. okay. This is, this is um, un, unrelated to anything we're really talking about, but there was, I just read this within the last two weeks, this woman that was a real expert, a cop that was a real expert in drugs and went, went through some kind of training like Wes did there. Um, she stopped a car and all over the back seat was this stuff that she said was crystal meth and she said she can identify that and that's what it was. Turns out it was Krispy Kreme off the donuts. Did you read that one? I did not. Yeah. That guy was in a lot of trouble for his donuts. But that's really what it turned out to be. Just curious to me to see that. Okay. I guess I want to see, and we can't do anything about the law, but this law, since the day that they got it on the petition, they got a petition and got it on the ballot to legalize in Michigan has been nothing but a complete total joke in the way it's written up. And I'll give you a prime example. is over all summer long, commercials and radio for the, quote, cannabis cup up at Dixie Motor Speedway. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Cannabis cup. Yeah. You must have a valid medical marijuana card to participate in this event. Quote. Then the next line. Doctors will be on hand for our non-medical carrying patients, <laughs> yeah, right. which means come in and pay your admission fee and we'll give you a script. It's a joke. And the law sucks. That's my commentary on it. We're burdened with having to create an ordinance to manage what the yeah. state allowed to be on the ballot. Thank you. Well, on that note. You go to the right doctor. Oh, my neck hurts. Okay, here's your card. Thank you for your $50 contribution. You know, you know, a lot of people, Larry, need it, and they go to the doctor and can't get it. I, I, I mean, there's I can, a lot of people. And there's twice as many that don't need it to get it. It doesn't so matter. It's a poorly written law, is my point. It's a poorly written law. You're going to be law. glad. That you I have seizures. I've never smoked marijuana to cure them. My medically prescribed prescription controls them 100%. There's some, there's some especially with kids, there's some that it's the only thing that's worked. You, you know, okay. here's the bright side. We don't have, we're not, that isn't the realm of our discussion yeah. for our yeah. Yeah. purposes. So we're just talking about dispensaries, yeah. so, right. period. Yep. So I still made a motion. Oh. Uh, I, I had a comment, okay. We had a fire this last week, and uh, I want to compliment both the police department and the fire department because <laughs> the fire was taken care of in great space in great shape and uh, everything worked beautifully and the yeah, people that, that started the fire were caught by the time the fire trucks yeah. got there. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I've, I've got a question and, and yeah that was fabulous uh, and it kind of ties in with our, our ordinance that we're, we're changing on uh, code violations and what have you. Mm -hmm. It has to do with vacant homes. Uh, that home was vacant, I believe, at the time. It's, mm -hmm. it's a vacant home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if we have anything in our ordinance, but there are a couple of homes in our township that are, that are vacant that I'm mm -hmm. aware of that have plywood over the, the windows. Mm -hmm. And the neighbors are up in arms over having these, these homes 
you know, sit across from for years at a time. Um, I'm curious, and I, I know, you know, I don't want to answer at this meeting, but uh, I'm just curious, and I'm, I'm throwing it out there rhetorically, of course, to look at, but if there's anything for us that we can do. I don't know, as long as the taxes are paid. Right, but it, you know, certainly as a blight to a neighborhood, yeah. they have a home with plywood over the windows <laughs> and over the doors sitting for years. There's they may mow the grass and comply with that, but it just looks absolutely hideous. Mm -hmm. And I would hate to have to live across the street from something like that. But I, there's people there that have contacted me with that regard. And it's, mm -hmm. hey, I wish, you know, I'm going to check and see if there's anything that can be done. But, yes. you know, it's a prime target for arson and fire and mm -hmm. everything else. Seems I mean, like there should be a timeline on that. I mean, you can board it up temporarily for a certain period of time and then have to put windows back in. Or... Well, we, yeah, and we do have, we have ordinances that allow us to to remedy that situation. The problem is that, that there's a lot of time involved. The other problem is it's very rare when you have a, a house that's boarded up or unoccupied that, that isn't in the process or in the possession of the treasurer's office of the land bank. And once once those properties go into those entities, you can you can pay to knock them down. If you happen to have $12,000 you want to throw at the problem, you can. But, but you've got to get the, a, a responsible owner, whether it be a mortgage company or an owner, um, if you want to get that property knocked down. Now what we're going to do, and, and um, we are, we're going to roll this out relatively slowly, but we, with the civil infraction ordinances we just passed, we're going to try to get the help of the district court to not necessarily short track, but we're going to try to get the district court to, with, with a shorter time frame and less expense on the legal side, to assist us in, in remedying those problems. And, and it, it may be a while before the district court will say, I want that house torn down by such and such a date, and if you don't tear it down, I'm gonna hold you in contempt. But we hope to get them there quickly, and uh, I think I think you're gonna see improvement in all levels of code enforcement. Very good. So I told Thank you, I can pay a house in uh, plywood up. Because we, we, when I was working for the police department, we had an individual that thought he was being uh, contacted by satellites, so he put tin foil over mm -hmm. every window. And, you know, so I mean, it, very little difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you got to you, you need to stay in. You need to stay consistent <laughs> with uh, with Ted's codes. Um, it needs to be habitable according to the building codes. It, you need to comply with the property maintenance code and. I don't know if Ted's got an opinion about tinfoil on the roof, but, <laughs> but it's still got to be within the codes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No comment right now. Yeah. <laughs> now, you made a, you're going to make a motion yeah. to I go into we'll executive session to, okay. to talk about uh, okay. labor negotiations. Yes. And also, I think we may have some discussion briefly about uh, a, a, a settlement and um, a judgment, consent judgment, that was entered on one of our cases a while ago. So we've got two items to talk about. Okay, Mr. Bennett. Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Yes. Mr. Kent. Yes. 